now. Our time, our time is somewhat limited, so I'm going to ask you to immediately get your Bible, you may have your seats, and I'm going to sit just like you. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. There are um, some things that I say to you and some things that I do not. But I have uh, discovered over these last uh, two and a half years or so that I stand in my work, you know, like your work. Everybody don't enjoy their work. I do enjoy mine. Amen. Only problem is, is that once I get into it, now I understand those old preachers, those that used to bore you to death because they stayed up too long. Amen. And while I'm standing and under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I could preach three hours. You know, when I cut off, even yesterday, after having uh, delivered the communion message and then coming back with a very brief break at 11 o'clock, and with the souls that came to the altar, I just made myself quit and walk out because I could have stood another hour or so. The only problem is is that that which goes against me worse than anything is long periods of standing. And um, so some of these times I'm going to not always be standing up. It, because it gets right in as, as the old folks say, right, right in my knees here, you know. <laughs> Let's go immediately to um, Gospel according to Matthew chapter 20. And what a joy it is to see so many of you here on this Labor Day. Ushers, you do, you do a tremendous job, and let, let me just say this to you, that whenever it is convenient in the area where you are to take your seat and get your Bible, that's fine too. Um, I, I appreciate the role that you play, but I also don't want you to miss everything that is happening as it relates to the worship. All right, Matthew 20, Matthew 20. I will not spend a lot of time dealing with the uh, timing of this particular, whether you want to just call it um, incident, uh, however Jesus himself explained it. It starts off by saying, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Now, th this is one reason why to me a day like today is so important. If labor was important enough for Jesus to compare the kingdom of heaven to laborers, then most certainly uh, it is worthy of us on a day when our nation celebrates labor, then it, it uh, deserves our taking a little time to look and see really what is in it. Well, at least from my point of view, it does. Uh, the Lord was very concerned, even in creation, uh, 
because when he made man, one of his reasons for making man, he said there was no one to till the ground. <laughs> he, he, he did not intend that your yard and my yard grow up with thorns and thistles and weeds. And then our only excuse being, oh, well, I'm tired. Don't have the time. No, the Lord puts people in that category who work, shall I say, refuse to work into that category that um, he's got a lot of things to say about in this book. And I'm going to have to one day ask you all to give me a little more than an hour on, la <laughs> on Labor Day so that we can go through it. Now, why? Simply because something has happened in the African-American community that is just absolutely tragic. I never thought I would live to see the day when the, there would be so many lazy. As my father and those old men in those days called them trifling. And then when you, you know, you can't really say a whole lot about the lazy, trifling men without also considering the scripture that talks about silly women. Uh, yeah, we need it today. <laughs> But he was concerned from the beginning, you know, that you're going to live from the sweat of your brow. What we want to do today is not so much uh, sweat, we want a uh, position and a check. And listen at the way Jesus styles this thing. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. Now, when you talk about the penny, the Greek denarius, don't think of the penny like that little copper thing you got in, in your pocket or in, in your purse. Because a penny was not the smallest amount of money in that day. Don't forget that there was um, uh, a farthing. Mm -hmm. There was the mite, the widow that we talk about, the widow's mite, that came up because Jesus, he went to the temple, and when it was time for the people to give and to cast in their gifts, he stood over the Bible, said, against the treasury, and he watched to see what they would give. And this widow woman cast in, if I'm not wrong, two mites. Now, y'all find that, show me I'm wrong, bring it to me, and I'll confess to you that I'm wrong. But it was really two mites. I know you heard only the widow's mite so long until uh, this time, 10 years from now. It's still going to be the widow's might, I know. Just, just like God won't hear sinner pray. I've explained that so many times until my mouth has gotten dry. 
I don't care what you say. God won't hear a sinner pray. Well, you better be glad that he heard somebody or else you wouldn't be here. <laughs> when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Now, the penny was really what was considered to be good daily wages. See, that penny was enough to sustain the man's family because, as I said, that was not the smallest amount of measurement of money in that day. So after he agreed with them, you don't see where there's no argument. You don't see where they call him cheapskate. <laughs> the agreement did not seem to be a problem at all. When he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. I'm at verse 3, where are you? And he went out about the third hour. Now, here's what you look at. See, at the beginning of the morning, early in the morning, Starting time is somewhere like about six o'clock in the morning. And he agreed with that group that goes to work early in the morning at about six o'clock for a penny a day. But look what happens in verse three. He went out about the third hour. Now the third hour is nine o'clock in the morning. When you even talk about the crucifixion of our Lord, uh, Matthew and Luke, possibly John, they, they talk in terms of six to the ninth hour, and the sixth hour was straight up 12 noon. But Mark gives you the intelligence of knowing that the time that the crucifixion actually started was the third hour of the day. Y'all sure can't get quiet on me. <laughs> the third hour of the day was the beginning of uh, that crucifixion, which was, as I said, about 9 o'clock in the morning. And it was not until the sixth hour that the sun blacked out. He was already on the cross when the sun blacked out. They weren't trying to hang him on the cross at the sixth hour and then heaven's getting dark at the same time. I mean, when you think about it, even from just a, uh, a standpoint of reason, uh, it does not too much make sense. Since I said that, I guess I got to take a minute. Look at Mark 15. Somebody go home say, I don't know what was wrong with pastor today. He just messed up so bad. He, he don't even know what time they crucified Jesus. Mark chapter 15, you have that? Look at verse 24 and 25. What does it say? When they had crucified him, they parted his garment. That's not the honey. For every man and it was the third hour all right now what time did when did they crucify him the third hour nine o'clock in the morning they didn't crucify him at, at high noon he was already on the cross at high noon and that's the sixth hour and let the church say all right. We're back to Matthew 20. This is our basic text. Verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing in the marketplace. And he said unto them, we in verse 4, go ye also into the vineyard 
and whatsoever is right, I'll give you. And they went their way. Now, they started off early in the morning. He sent a second crew the third hour. Now come on down to verse 5. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. In other words, he told the people who were in the marketplace the sixth hour, 12 o'clock noon. Uh, it's not too late. I'll, I'll still let you work a shift too. And you would have thought that this generous householder would have stopped the sixth hour at 12 noon. But the ninth hour, he goes out the sixth and the ninth hour and did the same thing. But finally in verse six, about the what? 11th hour. Now, you five o'clock in the evening now. You one o'clock, you one hour before quitting time. <laughs> see, we, we complain about eight hours, but see, this particular parable here is really talking about working from six to six. Twelve hour shifts. And this man goes out when there's only one hour left in the day. But he's got a little different attitude with these. About the 11th hour. What's his word there? He went out and found others standing idle. Now, he was willing to use the early crew at six, nine. He was even willing to let those come on the sixth hour at noon and three o'clock in the afternoon, the ninth hour. But now when you get to the eleventh hour, five o'clock in the evening, and these guys, they not working, they just standing around. These are, 20, these are 21st century African American men. <laughs> Why? If standing idle, he said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? In other words, in, in the eyes of the Lord, there's no excuse. For you having 11 hours when you should be busy and you're doing nothing Amen. but standing around being idle. Ah, it's quiet in him, it's quiet. <laughs> but you got to understand that the attitude, and the Lord, he's talking about the kingdom. His attitude with those folk who couldn't find nothing to do for 11 hours of the day. There's no excuse. Why is it, and, and don't, don't think that I am so naive that I don't see what's going on in the world today. I see that there is a concerted effort to demoralize our men 
and the women can go into the job market now. And instead of talking about women getting equal pay, they'll pay the woman more now because there's something that has happened that have made our men undesirable. But you can't put all of that on the world. A lot of this undesirability as it relates to our men is because of the conduct. No, nobody is going to be anxious to have somebody working for them who's drawing the check every couple of weeks. And then every day at lunch, he got his hand folded behind him and giving his buddy that little package. No, no don't, 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 many, don't many people want that kind of person on their payroll. Amen. But I don't know where we got this thing from that you don't suppose to work. That's why we die prematurely. Hello. That's why the world seemingly has made a reverse. It's because we do not seem to have the ability to stay on course and to do this thing the way the Lord intended. Now, of course, I, I know that these fellows that you run into a little later on in this parable felt they had a right to be angry. And let's go on and get through with this in about the next three minutes. He asked a question in verse 6. Why stand, are ye standing idle? Why stand ye here all day idle? Verse 7, they say unto him, because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, you, you understand that from the beginning, those who went in early in the morning, right straight on through those who went to work in the middle of the day and even in the afternoon, all of them understood that at the end of the day, you're going to get a penny. And they all agreed. Those fellows who didn't have but an hour left on the clock, he said, whatever's right, you'll get it. And you know, anybody who, whatever the job is, if you can't take an hour's work, <laughs> you're really in trouble. <laughs> So he says, whatever is right, that is what you'll receive. Now we come to verse 8. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Now here's something else that, you know, got trouble with. Now they just got here. Paying them first, and they the last, you know. <laughs> See, you got to understand that before this book was written, Jesus and those whom the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost determined to be authors within the confines of the Holy Bible. The, these, these persons uh, saw this day 2,000 years later, but they saw this day 
Come on, let's read verse 8 again. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his servant, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. Why would they think they were going to get more? When the agreement was, you work today, from what do they used to say? From can to can. <laughs> from six in the morning to six in the evening, and you're going to get a penny. But when they saw how generous the householder was, as he gave those last ones who came that penny that he had agreed with them on, then they automatically thought they should have received more. When the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. Verse 11, and when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. Now notice you don't see that word anywhere else. The Lord wants you to understand that when payday comes, whether you happy with your pay or not, he's still the good man. <laughs> he, they murmured against the good man of the house. They murmured against the paymaster. They murmured against the man who caused them to be able to have food to put on that table the next day, and they wouldn't have had anything but some so feet standing around the marketplace if he hadn't hired them. They murmured. It, it, it's, it's, it's sad when we look into the word and find that instead of standing with God, we'll stand on the other side and we stand for those things that he hates and then still come to church and run up and down the aisle bucking and jumping and speaking in some tongue you heard somebody making up on television. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm not trying in any way to nullify the work of the Holy Ghost within the midst of the saints. But a lot of folk, they get ready for Sunday so they can put on a show. And they put on their show. Because believe me, when the Spirit of God is at work in your life, you can't shout and dance and speak in tongues and feel that everything is all right when this book is saying one thing and your life is saying something else. You can't do it. And if there's anything at all that this book is against, it is against laziness. Uh, I don't know if I need to say that again, but uh, it, it keeps coming up in my spirit. If there's anything that this book is against, it is against laziness. Amen. If we actually could catch a hold to what this book is about, and you see, I, I always try to go a little bit beyond uh, even with these civil uh, holidays. 
I'd like to go a little bit beyond what uh, persons who don't know the Lord and don't know his word, what that purpose is. And I know that uh, the purpose of um, our nation in celebrating uh, this particular day does not have the spiritual connotations that I have uh, tried to bring to you today. But I also know that this is one of the problems that we have in Western society, and that is that we take just a little bit of what Christianity is supposed to be about, just enough to satisfy ourselves and make us believe we are on track. But this is a day for wholehearted dedication. This is a day when we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get away from this idleness. Idleness. The one thing that our society should have been thinking in terms of reducing is that thing that we have increased. One of the worst things that could have ever happened to today's society is cell phones. They cause they they more wrecks. And you can just leave out of a so-called confidential meeting. And before you can get where you're going. Well, honey, I, I know. Uh, I heard them. I heard them Sunday when they was talking about blah, 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 blah. And you spend so much time. <laughs> Gossip. Gossip, gossip. And it don't matter who you are and what position you hold in the church. If there's anything that this Bible condemns, it condemns eating the bread of idleness. It, it, it condemns talking about stuff that you don't even know. Hmm? Back when I was maybe a teenager, and the, uh, the, 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 the carnal world and, and the music that they were dealing with in those days, I thought it was just ridiculous. But they need to bring back some of those songs, I guess, and sing them from the choir stand. Because the junk that you are hearing that calls itself gospel music. Amen. Is a waste of your time and mine. Amen. And you go back to the 60s and some of the stuff that, for instance, here's the man who's, who, who's telling his girlfriend or his wife or whoever, you talk too much. You about to worry me to death. You talk too much. You even worry my pet. <laughs> you just talk, 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 talk. Yeah, you heard it. Talk too much. You talk about people you don't know. You talk about people wherever you go. You just talk. Talk, 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 talk too much. You talk about people you've never seen. You talk about people you just make me scream.
or be cooking dinner and you on the phone gossiping. I know y'all ain't gonna shout, and I don't want you to shout. I don't, I, I don't want nobody to insult my message by shouting today. Don't you? <laughs> Somebody would say, oh, that's sacrilege, the quota. Uh uh. That, that's not nearly as much sacrilege as, as the stuff that we do now in the name of religion. I was, I was saying to young, one of our young people, and I, and I know that you have to have certain liberties for young people, but you also have to let them know that there is a difference between what's happening out there and what's happening in here. And um, I, I drew a line not too long ago with someone, the young folk, they were getting ready to do some things and they, they wanted a smoke machine. I said, no, you ain't gonna bring no smoke machine in here. What's the purpose? Because, see, if I had the time to deal with it, I'd go back to the Old Testament and, and, and I'd bring up a couple of sons of, of, of Aaron named Nadab and Abihu, who God killed for offering strange fire on the altar. You got to be careful about what you do in connection with the worship of God. Well, when Jesus finished his sermon like this, they start tipping out. <laughs> and when the place was just about empty and wasn't nobody left but the disciples, he said, are you guys, y'all going to leave too? <laughs> but they had sense enough to realize, Lord, we don't have nowhere to go. <laughs> You have the words of eternal life. Praise God. I'm going to ask everybody at this time, our deacons are here, and I'm going to ask you to either write that check, and I, uh, I, I picked up some cash because I don't know where my checkbook is. And I'm not blaming that on Sister Patterson. I, I mislaid <laughs> I, I do mislay my own checkbook, so I'm not going to blame that on her. Uh, but brothers, if you and the ushers would make available envelopes, the offering that we are going to give now, we're going to thank God that he has given us a means of livelihood. Don't shoot the mailman. That's all, that, that's all I've done today is brought you the mail. Now, it's, it's addressed to you, and if you don't want to read it, that's you.
send me. Mm. Gonna sing it out. Gonna sing it out, Sister Michelle. Yes, oh yes. Oh yes. Here I am. Oh yes. Ooh. Oh hallelujah. Hmm. Yes. But I go. Glory to God. I may be fatherless, but I go. If the Lord wants somebody, here am I. Lord, I go. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I may be sick. Mm -hmm. Lord, I go. I may be sick. But Lord, I go. Here am I, here am I, Lord, here am I, Lord, mm. I go. Glory to God, glory to God, glory. Glory to God. Mm. Well, if you all didn't know the late Reverend Morris Mays, you just heard his offspring, his daughter, Michelle. <laughs> Praise God. I'm so glad to see my brother-in-law, Brother Marvin Harris with me today. Bless you, Marvin. Thank you for coming to be with us. Anyone else need an envelope? Uh, envelopes, that's what they've been doing, right? Oh, I need one. Yeah, well, you, f all right, Brother Adgerton, you fill it out. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I got straight up at 11 o'clock, so we're going to give the Lord maybe the next five minutes or so in prayer, and, and you'll see I didn't violate too badly. If there's someone in your family, somebody in your home, in your neighborhood, somebody that's close to you that really need God to intervene in some financial matters, and, and if their honest answer is that they're standing idle because no one has hired them if they haven't looked. You know, the Bible says, ask it shall be given, seek you find, knock the door shall open. Now, if they've gone through that and still have not been able to find, then we put that into the hands of the Lord. Hello? And let the Lord work out that financial dilemma, whether it be in our house, 
uh, whether it be down the street or just a friend or whomsoever. Because I just believe that God wants all of his people gainfully employed. Oh, yes. And we ask him. Yeah. In our prayer, we're asking the Lord for raises. Asking him to elevate. Elevate those finances. If there's not enough finance flowing into the mainstream of your home, you need God to do it. Listen, I serve a God that is a God of miracles. See, the Bible's got so much to say about finance. God talks so much about finance. Peter and Jesus needed miracle money. Oh, you remember, it was tax time. And when you owe the government, <laughs> you better have more than an excuse. The Lord told him to go and cast in a hook. Mm. Catch one fish. When you throw in the hook, the one that comes up first, so just look in his mouth. Jesus told his disciples when he first started at the beginning of his earthly ministry, drop your nets, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. In other words, I'll teach you how to catch men in the eyes of the Lord. We all like fish. But look at what he said. He said the, 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 the finance that you'll need is not going to come from how many fish you catch. You really don't need to catch but one. And when you catch that one, that one is going to have enough money to pay your taxes and mine. When I finished ministering Sunday and uh, as I said, God has blessed us to have some beautiful members here. And our beautiful people are in touch with other beautiful people. And I was trying to rush to get ahead of the crowd so that I could go home and get off my legs that were starting to actually to pain. And one of our sisters, she's here today, and uh, nobody needs to know who that is or who she's representing. But she just handed me a check, folded up. And I looked at it, hmm, it's nice. Because see, one person giving $2,000 is really uh, a, a great gift for one individual. And as I stepped through the door of my office, I, I heard a little voice say, look again. I looked again, and there was one more zero than I thought was there. And instead of 2,000, it was 20. And, I went all the way home and didn't really feel another pain. <laughs> mm. Glory to God, hallelujah. Deacons, if you come and drop those offerings in, just all come and Saints, if you just drop those offerings in those baskets and just take a position, I I'm not going to have y'all really to give it going out the door. You're going to give it and we're going to pray. We're just going. In fact, we're going to be praying even as we come to drop those offerings 
in the baskets. Hallelujah. We're just going to thank him first of all. Thank him for giving us a means of livelihood. Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for opening doors. Thank you for making ways. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're looking out for us even when we are not looking out for ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our livelihood. Thank you, Lord, for a place to lay our head. Thank you, Lord, for bread on the table. Thank you. Thank you, oh God, hallelujah, because you have just provided everything we need. Hallelujah. All I have needed, your hand has provided. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Savior. Hallelujah. God now began to open some doors. Open doors. Those that need places of employment, Lord, open doors. And then when we get inside the door, let there be a career elevator that lifts your people from one level to the next. And even as you lift us, provide raises, provide bonuses, provide everything that your people need. And we give you the glory. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. And even as we keep on giving you praise, you can just step from where you are and drop those gifts into the nearest basket. And again, some of y'all can move forward, it's all right. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you. Hallelujah, my soul magnify you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. God touch your saints today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Keep on giving him praise. Even as you come now, keep giving him praise. Ah, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. God bless you. you. Praise God for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Saints. Uh, Pastor said that was the dismissal prayer. Consider yourself dismissed. But before you go, I have one brief announcement. Rehearsal for this year's Men's Day service will begin this Saturday, September the 9th at 4 p.m. in the choir room. All brothers who desire to help us lift up the name of Jesus in the ministry of music are invited to attend. That's this Saturday, September the 9th. God bless you.